worship this morning, and we're just going to glorify our King.
prisoner no more because a lot of those guys they were in prison and they're out now and a lot of them did a lot of time and uh, I titled it a prisoner no more because we see three truths of God's grace and the first one is before you knew who Jesus was you were dead in your sin you were bound by chains but the beauty of the gospel is that God made a way so we didn't have to be bound by those chains anymore the second truth of God's grace is that when you did accept Jesus heart you got saved you were set free from those bonds from those chains and you know death no longer had a hold on you and the third truth of God's grace is whenever we were set free we need to act like we were set free because like I said those chains they don't bound you anymore you don't have to be bound by sin today anymore you don't have to be bound by your trouble today no more you don't have to be bound by the war that's going on around you see we don't have to be like Peter in the Bible and we have to keep our eyes on Jesus instead of looking at because if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he's going to get us where we need to be. He's always going to reach down farther than we can reach up. And that's the beauty of the gospel. That's the beauty of Jesus. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Declare. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see. I'm 
Father, we thank you that your presence is what makes the difference. You do, Father. That, Father, where you come and your presence is within us and amongst us, Father, we thank you. We thank you that is, it is all you that makes the difference. And we thank you for that, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I sense this morning as we were singing that God said he senses a hunger amongst his people. There's a hunger amongst the people. And I know that he said, if you're hungry, I will meet that hunger. So, Father, as we hunger after you, Father, as we come before your throne, Father, I thank you that you will fill us. Father, just as a child, when they're hungry and they need something to eat, that father and mother give them what they need and you fill that hunger. Father, today I pray as we come before you with hungry hearts, hungry and thirsting after you, I thank you that you promise to fill and to meet us exactly where we at. So, Father, what every person in this place or in sound of my voice are hungry for the presence of God, Lord, I pray that you would meet that hunger in their lives. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are faithful towards your people. Lord, as we sang this morning, and Lord, we would defeat the enemy. Father, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that we defeat the enemy. Father, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that you meet our hunger. It is by your power, Holy Spirit, that you meet our thirst. And Father, we pant after you like a deer pants for water. And Lord, we ask you to fill us, to fill us with you, Holy Spirit. Lord God, you are the only one that is satisfying. The only one who is satisfying and meets our needs. Father, we thank you that you are the deliverer that sets us free, as we heard this morning. That you are the one that sets us free. And so, Lord, as we go forth, fill us. Meet our hunger, I pray, Father. Those that are desiring you, Father, that seek you will find you. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Meet us. Come, dwell within us. Have your way within us, Father. We submit to you today, Father, our desires and our longings towards you. And we ask that you meet us in that secret place, in that place when we're driving our car or we're in our living rooms or wherever we're walking, God, you meet us as we hunger after you. And we thank you for that, Father. You love hungry children because, Father, you want to fulfill that hunger. And we thank you for that today, Father. You're a good God and you're an amazing Father towards your children. And we love you for that today, Lord. We thank you for that. Father, we pray for each person, Father, that is part of this congregation, your people, Lord, the kingdom of God, we pray for them today. That, Lord, those that are seeking you will find you. Father, those that are seeking for healing will be healed in Jesus' name. Those that are seeking for finances, you will provide our every need, and we thank you for that. Father, those that may be downcast or, Father, hurt or rejected in any way, we thank you, Father, that you are the one that is the fulfiller, Lord, as we are hungry to be met in those areas in our lives. And we love you for that today, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are faithful towards your people. Amen. We love you today and we bless you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God's good, isn't he? Amen. He's a good God and he hears us and he answers us and he fulfills uh, the desires that we have towards him and when we were singing a word hunger god just put it in my heart that these people that these here are hungry we are hungry for god and he is pleased with that Amen. and he loves that we are hungry towards him you know when you're not hungry you don't feel like you need anything right you feel satisfied and hunger makes you dissatisfied makes you feel that way so i know god is happy He's excited and he loves it when we're hungry and we have a desire to reach him and to hear from him. I wanted to share real quick this morning out of Luke 2.9. It's 
um, being what I've been going through before the Christmas and during this Christmas season, and it's um, in Luke 2, but it's after the um, angels appeared out of the heavens to the, the, th the wise men, and um, they, they came and they told them what was going to be happening and that there was going to be a star and they needed to go to the star. And, and uh, when they heard this, they went with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in a manger. And then the next verse says, and when they, in verse 17, and when they saw it, they made known what they had been told them concerning the child. I thought that was an interesting scripture. They made known to Mary and Joseph and those around what they had been told concerning the child. And then Mary said, but Mary was keeping everything within herself, all these things, saying, weighing, and pondering them in her heart. I thought that was very interesting. So here these wise men came and they told her what the, what the angel of the Lord had told them, what they had seen and how they had done and followed the star. And they, they had come and found baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And Mary pondered all that she had heard. And I really felt like I wanted to encourage you. Mary kept inside of her the things that had been said. She treasured what had been said. And it's because what was being said to her was something that was a promise and a fulfillment of what God had said. And I think in our lives, it's very important that we ponder and we think about and we treasure the things that Holy Spirit has said to us. Just as Mary did, it was obviously very important. Amen? And um, the word of God that we hear and when Holy Spirit speaks to us, are very valuable. They're valuable. And we kind of sometimes just take it for granted. You know, the words we heard this morning, that God is going to fight for us on our behalf and do what he says to do, we need to take those and ponder on them. The voice of God spoke to us. Holy Spirit speaks to us. Amen? You know, during your reading of your Bible, and when you're reading and something jumps up to you, Take it, ponder on it, because I'm sure Mary went through days when she was like, really, this is what I am doing? This is not easy? Nothing was easy? But she, because she pondered on the Word of God and what Holy Spirit had put inside of her, she protected it. We need to protect the Word of God in our lives. We need to preserve it. We need to make sure it is valuable. And we need to be able to pull on them and speak the promises of God in our lives. Amen. Amen? We need to be able to speak the promises of God. We need to be able to speak on the memories of God. Throughout the whole Old Testament, what did they do? They built stones of memory. They made places of memorial. So what? That their children's children would remember what happened. It is important to know and to remember what God has done. And so I want to encourage you because it builds us and it confirms us. When you go back and say, wow, look what God did there. He healed my body, you know. Look what God did there. He set me free. You know, there's lots of things that we need to remember and ponder on because it's a faith builder in our lives. And I wanted to end with Isaiah 40 where it says, the grass withers, the flowers go, they fade, but the word of God stands forever. Amen. 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 It's the word of God that stands forever. So I want to encourage you, maybe as we go into this new year, that let's remember, ponder, value the word of God in our lives and the words of God in our lives. And the promises that God has given us in our quiet times or reading the word or our dreams or our words that have been prophesied. There's prophecies in our lives that I know God is still going to fulfill. Amen? Yes. And same with you. And so we need to value that. Because let me tell you, that is the only thing that will stand. And will keep us is the word of God. Everything else fades away. But the word of the Lord never fades away. And it never returns void. Amen? Amen. 
So let's remember that. Just as Mary pondered what they had said, she embraced what they said, she valued what they said, she treasured what they said, because she knew that she would need that. Amen? She would know, need to know that God spoke, he gave a word to them, and it came to pass. And that's what God does for us today. He gives us a word, it'll come to pass, and we can rejoice and remember it and stand on things that we are believing God for. Amen? Who can declare in here today that God supplied a need for you when you needed it? Amen. Yes, let's remember that. It's a faithful that who can declare that God healed you Amen. of something. Amen? Amen? Who knows that God has protected you from the stairs of the enemy? Amen? Amen. See, these are good. it's a faithful to ponder those things. I think it's a good word that we need to ponder and remember and be reminded so that we can walk by faith and sometimes definitely not by sight. Amen? Because he's a good God and he never changes. Never changes. His word remains the same. It says, his word, the God word, God's word stands forever. Amen. And it will not change. Amen? Amen? Well, I'm glad that you're here with us this morning. We're grateful for those that have come out and shared with us today. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. And those online, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we're glad that you're online with us and here in the building. And if you're a first-time guest here in person, we welcome you. Uh, we have a gift for you. Leslie would love to share that with you. She just raised her hand right there. Meet her, and she will be out in the foyer, and she would love to share that gift with you. And then if you're online and you're a first-time guest or you have a prayer need or a request or just want to connect with us, there's a tab on our webpage that says connect. You just click on that and it will give you a little form to fill out and we will make sure that we get with you and we connect with you. Amen? I know that's it's kind of hard being connected right now, but we're trying our best to be able to connect people and be together and when we can and to do what we need to do to see God's fulfillment for Tree of Life Church. Amen? So do that if you can, and we would appreciate it. This Wednesday night, we continue the Bible study online. I believe it might be the last one. I'm not sure. Um, it's going to be this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock online with a, a Zoom meeting. And if we send that out in an email. If you don't get it, make sure you get a hold of me and make sure you get that. But it should go out in an email, the connecting, and you don't need a password or anything. Just click on it, and it should connect you to the Zoom meeting. And we would love to have you. Also, January the 6th, which is the following Wednesday, is going to be a night of worship here at the church. So come join us if you can. It will also be streamed online. Um, but if you can come in person, come join us. We always have an amazing night of fellowship and worship on the first Wednesday of every uh, month. So join us if you can. And we, then on Thursday, we're going to have a prayer meeting at 6th, the 7th. Come and join us. And um, January the 4th, we're going to be having a, um, a book club meeting. It's called Between Heaven and Texas. It's a good book. Come join us if you can, and uh, we are going to just have a good night of fellowship and fun if you need it. If you have any questions, give me a call. My phone number's in there, and we would love to do that. And then discipleship class is continuing uh, on Sunday afternoons at 3. If you have any questions, see Sandra or Jack, and they will be glad to get with you and hook you up with that. And um, last but not least, on Wednesday, January the 13th, unfortunately, we have to undeck the halls, all right? Um, but on the 13th, we're going to be doing that at the church. And so if anybody can help, we would love for you to come put it on your calendar. We will wear masks and we'll have social distancing as we work. But I know that Susan and Luke would really appreciate all help. They basically put all this up by themselves with Jack's help um, in, this, in this building. And so getting it down with some help will be great. So that's going to be Wednesday the 13th. If you could please put that on your calendars and help Susan and Luke as we undeck these halls, okay? Well, uh, that's all I have for this morning. We're going to dismiss the youth to go on upstairs, and I, I pray you had a blessed Christmas. We had beautiful weather, I know that, right? The weather was beautiful, and it was uh, fun. We did have our family over and have a good time together, so I pray your uh, uh, Christmases were great, and we really uh, 
know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Amen. And we don't just celebrate Christmas one day of the year. We celebrate Christmas every day Amen. because we are thankful that Jesus came to this earth and we celebrate his life and all that he has given to us and the gifts of God that he has bestowed Amen. upon us. All right, I'm going to let Pastor come up and, and share with you this morning. And thank you very much for all the help with the Christmas Eve service. It was amazing. And we really enjoyed it. It is online if you missed it, but we had a good time. So thanks for everybody that helped with that too. Amen. Amen. All right, good to see you folks that are here on this uh, festive uh, Christmas weekend. And like Cheryl was saying, we had, hope you had a great time for Christmas Day with uh, family, friends, or yourselves. If you're by yourselves as well, God's presence is there with you uh, no matter what. And uh, how many folks here got to see the Bethlehem Star on the 21st? We saw that. It won't come back for another couple of hundred years. So if you missed it, you, you missed it, okay? But you know, that Bethlehem Star was out there on the 21st, and there was angels flying around it, and there was all kind of manifestations, and it was really good. But actually, it was actually two planets that came close together and formed kind of a star-looking thing that was very, very unusual uh, in the southern, southwestern sky. And so the Bible talks about there'll be signs in the heavens in the last days, and we're seeing more and more signs like that that seem perhaps a little and trivial to us, but God has all kind of things worked out for his own purpose and reason to keep on reminding his people, my son is coming back. Amen. He's going to keep on showing you guys signs, keep on doing things in our planet in 2021 to show you that Jesus is really coming back. Amen. And the Bible says that it'll be such a delayed thing that many folks that are unbelievers, especially will say, where's this coming that you Christians all talk about? I don't see anything happening different. And then the Bible says in an hour when you think not, then the Son of Man will come. Many of us know that God works by surprise. God works by breakthrough. And God comes when you least expect him many times. Amen. But I believe 2021 is going to be a year of expectancy. Amen. Expecting God to do great things among us, good things among us. And I'm looking forward to what God has in store for the new year. Amen. But also looking back at this past year, the great things God has already done. Um, we have uh, many, many birthdays happening this coming week here. Uh, most folks are not able to be in the sanctuary today from traveling, distancing, and so forth. But in our nursery is our leader named Carmen um, Geraldo, and her birthday is actually two days. So if you had a chance, tell her happy birthday. God bless you. She's, she's a great, faithful woman of God, great mother and wife, and we appreciate her faithfulness in the church. Amen. And as I was praying about her, the Holy Spirit gave me Luke chapter 13, verse 9, that says, uh, Let it go for one more year. If it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. So I think there's some things in Carmen's life that God's going to say, uh, give it one more year. Keep on praying for it, whether it is you're believing God for. And um, you're going to see God either work for you or allow you to cut some things off, one of the two, as this next year takes place in your life. In the Carlo family, is Martha, Martha here today? I know the children may be here. Martha Carlo's birthday is also this week. I have received Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And I believe that God's going to give uh, you, Martha, more and more help by God's grace. As you're facing things that are too big for you, uh, look for God to be sending people around you and sending other ministries around you, perhaps as well, to be able to be that strong threefold cord. It's not easily going to be broken. So don't be despairing. Don't be discouraged by battles you face. God's going to bring reinforcements to you this year. Uh, Soke Ajavan is also not here today in the, in the sanctuary, but he's probably watching online. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8 says, The righteous is delivered from trouble. It says, And it shall come on the wicked instead. So as long as you're following God, whatever troublesome things may come your way, Soke, this year ahead, I believe God's going to send you deliverance and send you help. It's not for you, but it's for those around you, maybe, maybe wicked around you. Uh, it's going to come on them instead of yourself. As long as you're staying close to God, following God in his way. Uh, Joey Hatley is one that helps out back here with the coffee ministry. Just had the twins. And she's also a great daycare director, great mother and uh, wife. And so for her, as I was praying about Joey Hatley, I received John chapter 17, verse 4. says, I have glorified you on the earth. This is, uh, this is God talking about Jesus Christ, his son. But it's going to pertain to her herself as well. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. So Jesus is saying the work that God gave him to do, he's finished that work. I believe for Joey, uh, you're going to see God finishing the work you've begun. So I'm going to quit or cease until God wants it to yeah. because he's brought glory to you, strength to you, and anointing to you. 
to finish what he's begun in you and you will finish the work is what i hear god saying for you this coming year yolanda nunez are you here today just wait for me if you're here yolanda uh she's probably also not able to be, able to be here live um psalm chapter 18 verse 3 says i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from my enemies yes. and so that's going to be a key for you don't do a lot keep on praising god keep on worshiping god don't let the battle be yours alone and your strength your might but it's going to be by his spirit you're going to see the enemy defeated before you and you're going to find that worship and praise and intimacy with god is going to be a key part of that as well I want to give a shout out to those that we have not seen for months and months. And those, some of these folks are um, at a distance. Uh, this, is, this is the birthday week for Colton Stygen. Those are the Stygens. That's their son, Colton. Uh, also, Sarah Resendez, who's been in this church for years. She's out there in Leander now. And also, Joseph Sanchez, the Sanchez family. Uh, his birthday is this week. What age is Joseph going to turn this week, as far as you know? 18? 17. Oh, 17. So he's getting real close to that 18 years of age. So make sure everybody that knows these people. Uh, give them something to them as again as a shout out to them congratulations happy birthday to you anniversaries we got a newer couple in our church that is also watching online very faithful people you'll see them in, in person in due time named george and olga samuelson most folks don't know them yet in this church they actually call this their church home and uh, you'll see them like i said more so in the new year and by god's grace and faith we'll have a newcomer's luncheon take place uh, in the new year as well and all these folks will start coming back together before the marriage supper of the lamb how many folks know in the marriage supper of the lamb there's no masks no social distancing no vaccines no disease no sickness and all the old things will be passed away and behold all things will become new amen, amen. so a lot of you folks here have hope you had a great feast on uh, christmas day there's leftovers for you guys as well We'll be having leftovers today, I'm sure. If the leftovers are still good. And uh, thank you again for all you, all the worship team that was here helping us out on the Christmas Eve service. God bless the worship team, the ushers, all the helpers that were here volunteering with that. We appreciate all the things you've done to help us out these this past year as well. And so I'm going to have you take your Bibles and look at the book of Psalms, chapter 139. I'm giving a standalone message here today to end up the, the year of 2020. And again, I have never cursed this year. I believe it's been a year of challenges. It's been a year, like all of us know, of uh, death. There's been many, many people by the hundreds of thousands die around the earth uh, from the virus itself. There's been many people have gone through, gone through stress and even nervous breakdowns. There's been a suicide level going up. There's been things of a negative realm happening all around us that the news media is very, very quick to point out to us. But in the other realm, God is still moving by his spirit. There's been millions added to God's kingdom. There's been millions healed by God's power and might. There's been marriages saved. There's been car accidents that did not take place and did not happen. There's been children protected by God's spirit. There's been provision given to folks who they needed money for rent, for food, or for shelter. Uh, there's been God's peace upon people's lives. They're going through turmoil and going through angst and going through all kinds uh, of nervous things in their lives as well. God has delivered folks of demonic oppression, demonic possession. And folks that were addicts have been set free this last year in Jesus' name. Amen. So. There's always more to rejoice about than to be uh, ungrateful for because the fact is you live in a fallen world and so things happen around us on an ongoing basis that are negative but god says where sin abounds my grace will more always abound than the sin and the evil yes. and so again i believe in 2021 we're getting lined up here that god's gonna help us recover the things the enemy has taken from us and i still believe god for revival i believe god for refreshing and I believe God for end time harvest in this next coming Amen. year as well. Amen. And I believe our youth are going to uh, have a personal walk with Jesus Christ themselves. Not religion, not just programs, and not just entertainment, but a personal, viable relationship with God themselves. May our youth have that, our children have that as well in the months and weeks ahead if they don't have it yet. Amen. So I'm um, talking here this morning about being on track for God's purpose, being on track for God's purpose because I believe that God has a good ending for all of our lives many folks in the body of Christ they start well they don't always finish well and I want to remind you again that Jesus Christ is the author and also the finisher of your faith Amen. he who began a good work in you the Bible says will complete that work so it means God's got a point a and then God's got a point Z is the ending he's the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the ending and God wants you to have a good ending in your life as well. And I believe that God wants this year to end well, and he wants the next year to start well. And so I want Jesus Christ to be at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. 
Amen. and see Jesus Christ in your life every day of 2021 as well. But part of that is being on track for God's purpose is very, very important. So Psalms chapter 139 reminds us where we've come from. Verse 13 says, you, O God, have formed my inward parts. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. My soul knows that very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. In your book, they all are and were written. The days fashioned for me, but as yet there were none of them, God's prepared a work for us all in advance. Amen? And so purposelessness devalues the future. And the Bible says that a vision people of God perish. That word vision actually means a prophetic revelation. Without prophetic revelation, my people perish. Now, many folks don't know why they're on the earth. They don't know why they're, why they're here today. Many of our high school graduates have a hard time knowing what they want to go get involved in for a college and university. But God's got a purpose for every human on the face of the earth. No one's here by accident. Amen. Even those who were birthed by man's accidents are not here by accident as far as God's concerned. How many folks know that when a man and woman comes together, even in an accidental, even in, even in a dangerous way or a wrong way, when they create a human being, God puts a spirit in that human being that is not by accident. Mm -hmm. Those spirits are there. God's got a hold of them, and God puts them in who he wants to put them in, and he's got an eternal purpose for every human born on the face of the earth. Okay? So never, ever take and discount yourself by who your father is or who your mother is or where you were born at or who you were born to. You are not an accident. You're here on purpose, and God's got a purpose for your life. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, we don't believe this. The Bible says my people will perish. The word perish means my people will cast off restraint and become divided. You're seeing it happening in our culture today like never before. Folks are casting off restraint. They're saying I want no boundaries. And they're finding themselves getting very, very divided in our nations actually even today. Amen. And so God says that takes place when people cast off restraint. When they have no vision, they're going to find themselves divided. And they're going to find themselves having no borders and saying, let no man tell me what to do. Not even God himself. I am my own God, and I'll choose my own borders, my own truth, and be divided from that. God wants us to be united in the body of Christ and be one as he is. When the last prayer that Jesus Christ prayed was, Father, make them one as we are one. So they may know you and know the Father and know who you are. Okay? Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves living out 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 22. Which says, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Many folks live like that right now. They say, get all the gusto you can get. Uh, try to make heaven take place only on this earth. This is the only heaven I'm going to know about myself. God says, no, this is the only hell we know about is right here on this Amen. earth. This will, be the, this will be the only hell Christians ever experience in their entire eternal life will be on this earth. Mm. The short time we live here. Amen. You, it only gets better from here. But praise God, as long as we're here to live is Christ, to die may be much better, but to live is Christ. And so may Christ Emmanuel be with us every day. We're alive on the earth. It's not God's will for anyone to live life and wonder if they fulfill their reason and purpose for being on the earth. I mean, the first thing the Holy Spirit does when he baptizes us and fills us uh, by his own power and grace, he starts showing us why we're on this earth. I know myself when I was 19, 20 years old, I had a, a map, I had a plan in my life to be a, a certified public accountant. I had homes I was picking out in the town I lived in, furniture I was picking out to have in my house, the kind of car I wanted to drive, and all the things and stuff and so forth that was in my mind. And God put all of that to destruction. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he showed me, you're not called to be an accountant. You are called to be a man of God, to be my voice and to be my mouthpiece upon the nations. And so God put me in the right place at the right time to get me trained and sharpened. I'm still being trained today. I'm still learning things today. I'm never, I've never have arrived yet, but I do know I'm on the path that God wants me to be on. Yes, I still make mistakes. Yes, I still fall short in many areas of my life. But I know that I'm doing what God's will and God's plan is. Amen. Even pastoring this church right now, God did miracles and God brought things into a divine alignment for Cheryl and myself to be in this place 17 years ago. Amen. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt we're where God wants us to be right now today. 
And if God wants us somewhere else, God will make that very clear, very plain to us. But as long as God wants us here, you're stuck with us. But also, I hope you're blessed with us. And we're blessed with you guys because you're where God wants you to be at. Amen. And so God wants us to grow together, be together here to exemplify who Jesus Christ is, but also to do things to expand God's kingdom upon the earth. Amen. You find out God's purpose for your life. You're going to wake up every day rejoicing in who God is, how good God is. You're going to be glad you're alive. Thank and you're going to you find Jesus. yourself having reason to rejoice every day because you know your purpose, your reason to be alive upon the earth. So here's some principles to write down today. Three things to write down. Principles that have to do with purpose in general. Just purpose in general. So number one is this. Everything created has a purpose. Everything made has got a purpose. This pulpit's got a purpose. This glass has a purpose. This table's got a purpose. Everything made, created, has got a purpose. Every chair, carpet, so forth, all around us, all these things have a purpose. But also, every human created has got a purpose. Every animal, every bird, every fish Whoa. God created has a purpose. That's why I'm very slow myself to get my tonsils cut out. I still have my tonsils. I still got my appendix. I think God must have put them there for some reason, some purpose. So I've got mine. Amen. <laughs> And so I'm going to keep mine as long as I can. Um, everything's got a purpose in our bodies, and praise God, our lives are here for God's purpose as well. Uh, you know, I heard that in the mission field years ago, missionary took a, a chainsaw over, I think, to a, a, far, a place like in Papua New Guinea where chainsaws did not exist. And he cranks that chainsaw out and makes a lot of noise cutting down some trees. And some of the, one of the nationals heard that noise. And so they go to where the noise was at, and the, by this time the chainsaw's uh, done. They turn the thing off. It's sitting on the ground there. And he thinks, this thing must be used to saw down trees. I see trees have been cut down around it. So he picks the chainsaw up and starts trying to uh, saw the trees with the motor not being on. It shows us there, if we don't know what the purpose of something is, it becomes abused. It becomes used in the wrong way. When you don't know what your purpose is, you're going to find yourself abusing yourself. You're going to find yourself neglecting yourself, and you're going to find yourself not fulfilling what God's best is also for your life. Amen? Everything's got a purpose, and our generation has realized our generation's got a purpose also today. So number two, where purpose is unknown, abuse or misuse is going to be inevitable, like I just said there. Abuse or misuse will be inevitable when things, when purpose is unknown. That's why, again, so, so many of our younger people have no problem getting involved in sometimes illicit drugs, illicit sex, uh, dangerous living, fast driving, car racing, things like that. They don't understand that there's a great price in their bodies, their lives, their mind, their soul, their spirit. And they should not fool around or take lightly who they are upon this earth. Amen. Our, our lives should have gravity. Our lives should have some seriousness to it. Our lives should be taken and, and taken in a way where you say, God, every day I wake up, what do you want from me in my life? I want to be following your plan for me in Jesus' name. Number three is this. The purpose of anything is only found in the mind of the creator. The purpose of anything you see is only found in the mind of the creator. Again, you look at a glass or a table or a chair. Whoever created those things in their mind, they made that because they saw a purpose for that. Do you realize that um, the outboard motor was made by a man named Johnson? That's a good name, Johnson. Because this guy had a, a, love, a love of his life. He lived on the other side of a big lake about a mile wide. And he said, I'm getting tired of rowing my boat to see my love. It takes too long to get to her. He sat down and invented the inboard, outboard motor, motorized motor for boats. And his name was Johnson. That's where the outboard motor came from. In the mind of a creator comes every invention on the face of the earth. And the Bible says, or not the Bible, mankind says necessity is the author of invention. And I think the same thing is also true of God. God's got a purpose for you and I. And God's got a reason for us to be alive on the earth. Only he in his own mind can show us why are we alive even today. Imagine traveling back to 1950. Taking with you a CD. Take with you a zip drive. Take with you a little bag of microwavable popcorn and show it to somebody in 1950. They would have no clue what this thing is for. Is it zip drive a necklace? For my, it's kind of a weird looking necklace, but is that, is that what that thing is? Is this CD a little bitty miniature vinyl disc for my little turntable? That's a, that's a real small 45 for my turntable. Is this little bag of popcorn is all sealed in plastic? 
Is that all the beer you can get your hands on? Is, is something like that? And so they wouldn't realize they don't know what microwaves are. They don't know what CD players are. They don't know what computers are. So they have no clue why this thing is on the earth. The same thing is true of you and I. We don't know why we're on this earth until the creator takes rulership and lordship over our lives. When God is Lord of our lives, our life starts making sense. Oh, that's why I'm alive. That's what I'm called to. That's why I live in Austin. That's why I'm living here in 2020. That's why I'm alive. That's why I have the kids I've got, the place I live, the job I'm at. Now it all starts making sense because the creator in his own mind put me in the right place at the right time to fulfill his purpose for my life. Do you believe your destiny, though, can be put on hold for a season? Because many believers believe that in 2020, their entire lives have been put on hold right now, and they're living in a thing called suspended animation. They don't see themselves bearing fruit. They don't see themselves gaining ground. I'm saying right now is a time of opportunity to press into God, to spend more time with the Lord, let God do some plowing inside of our hearts, maybe bring some deliverance, maybe bring to us some peace, maybe bring to us a restructuring of ideas for the future, but God is posturing his church, I believe this, for again, great things, great works, great harvest. God's not taking the church backwards. He's gonna be moving us forward by his power and by his spirit. You gotta believe that and see that also before you actually go put that in practice in your own lives. Now, sometimes your life is put on hold by God himself. You're gonna find the Israelites uh, were taken by God, the Bible says, from Egypt into the promised land in a long path. He made their path last for 40 years. It could have taken about three weeks in the natural realm. That's how far it was, about a three-week walk. It took 40 years because God delayed them because God knew their faith was not big enough to face the giants they'd face on the other side of the Jordan River. The body of Christ right now is going through some delays himself, perhaps, because God knows we're not ready for the harvest God's going to send to us. Not ready yet for the, the kind of uh, anointing God wants to put upon our lives as well. We still have some things of our flesh that God's going to deal with, some things of pride, some things of arrogance, some things of insufficiency, some things of lack of self-worth, of wrong identity in our own lives and hearts. God wants to heal all those things that hinder us, that God may then pour into us an ability to receive that new anointing, to receive that fresh work, Amen. and to have the vision God forward. wants the church and the body of Christ to have to move forward and march together to bear the kind of fruit God wants us to bear in the year ahead. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to be qualified when anything God wants to put on me and on you guys in the year to come. May God do that for us. Now, sometimes we're put on hold by people. People can sometimes leave us. There's key folks sometimes God puts in your life. I've known of pastors whose wives have divorced them. Uh, because the devil got in their marriage somehow, and somehow some place was given there to the enemy, and uh, by, the, by the wife leaving the husband, it, it set that man back sometimes two or three years in his life. I've seen ministry teams doing the same thing, where some key people would take and break off and go, and set them back for several months or several years. It takes place in business, it takes place in cities and schools and so forth, but the good news is, whenever a person or a human holds you back, God will always bring back in and fill that back up and give you more than you had before on the other side if you just will guard your heart and not get bitter. Like I said two weeks ago, do not let yourself get bitter when man does things to you to hold you back and delay what God wants for your life. Amen? Look at Joseph. Joseph was meant to be the ruler, second in command over all of Egypt, to help the Israelites not to starve to death. But God delayed him by his own brothers for many, for several decades. In those delays, his heart got right, his character got right. He began to be in the right place at the right time to get exalted by God in the right time as well to bring forth the most salvations and the biggest bang for God's buck happened because delay took place and Joseph did not get bitter. He forgave his brothers. He forgave the Pharaoh around him, the people around him, and praise God, he fulfilled God's purpose for his life by doing that. Psalms chapter 37, I want you to turn and look at that as well, because sometimes we're delayed also detained by our own foolishness. That's something you can control yourself. Your foolishness means your sin. The Bible talks about in Proverbs, it says, the fool has no desire for learning. That word fool does not mean stupid or idiot. It actually means sinfully controlled by your flesh, okay? We can control that. 
Now, that's one thing I, the, what the Holy Spirit is telling me very, very strong about right now. There's many folks in the body of Christ, by the millions and millions, who are being detained by God right now because they will not submit to the Word of God, the will of God, the plan of God, and the kingdom of God's culture in their lives. They're letting too much foolishness come in their lives. Amen? I want to tell you again, you cannot serve two masters. You can't have one foot in the world on Monday through Friday. And then one foot in the church on Sunday morning, that's what God said, little dabble, do you? God says, no, you got to seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, then all these things will be added to you automatically if you'll just do that, says God. Amen. And I believe a lot of foolishness will be dealt with by the Holy Spirit in the year to come. Amen. Let God deal with my foolishness first, amen? There's things that I may have in my own life here that God wants to point out, put his finger on there, may God sharp, sharpen me, fine-tune me. Remove from me things that grieve his spirit. May God do the same thing for the body of Christ because sometimes we detain ourselves by our own sinful nature and our own foolishness in our lives. Amen. And God's going to deal with that also, I believe, in a good, righteous way for our benefit. So Psalms 37, verse 23 and 24, it says, The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his path, his way. Though he falls... He shall not be utterly cast down. What God is saying there is never, ever write any believer off who backslides. Mm -hmm. Many of your Christian friends right now are just off the beaten path. They're serving the devil, it seems like. They're going back to their old ways, and their old plans. Do not discount them. God still knows them. God still loves them. God wants them back into his fellowship once again. It's time to pray for them. It's time to believe God. They come back to the Lord full blast once again. Let's not discount them and cancel them mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not part of the cancel culture. Culture. Amen. We're part of the redeeming culture. Amen. 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 The restoration culture. The rescue culture is what God's called us to. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Micah 7 and verse 8 says this. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall, because I will arise. So it's saying here, whenever you take and see somebody fall, don't rejoice over them. Don't rejoice the devil himself. You know, back in the Old Testament, whenever Shimei was cursing David, David was being chased by his own son, Absalom, who took kingdom from him for a few days, a few weeks. And he was throwing dirt on uh, David and cursing him, calling him names and said, you deserve this. All the blood you've shed, all the harm you've caused over Saul's household. You deserve this, you scoundrel. And he's cursing at him and throwing dirt on him. How many folks know that as the, as the Bible goes along and the story keeps on progressing, God restores everything back to David once again. And David could have killed Shimei very easily, but he did not do that. He let his son do that later on. But he said, he said let this man curse all he wants because I know I may fall right now, but God will raise me up in due time. May the curses he gives upon me today be used by God to be a blessing for me in the future. Amen. So Micah 7 verse 8 goes on and says, When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case, executes justice for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I will see his righteousness once again. How many of us realize right now if it wasn't for God's mercy, we would have all been consumed years ago. You got to realize that. Jesus Christ could have said one word on the cross. And he would have had thousands of angels come down and wipe out the entire humankind. And God would have started the whole thing all over again. But praise God, Jesus said the words, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And God relented. God held back judgment. And praise God, we're now alive today because of what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. May we be like Christ ourselves. And forgive ourselves and forgive those who also trespass against us. And not be children of darkness, be children of light Amen. in this dark world around us more and more. Now, again, you're, you're probably going to see things take place in the year ahead in the, in the natural realm. There might be more darkness. There could be more wars, rumors of wars. There could be more shortages of different things around us. That is time for the church to shine, Amen. not to buy into the darkness around us. Amen. Amen. Don't curse yourself. Don't curse your provision. Don't curse what God can do in you and through you. Bless yourself. 
bless his holy name and say, my soul shall delight and my soul shall be fat in the Lord. Though there's leanness all around me, I shall be one of having a prosperity and blessings and more than enough that I might share with folks around me in their times of need, yes. this hour and season is what God is saying. Doesn't God's word tell us in times of famine, my people shall be blessed. Amen. Not just for your sake, but the sake of folks around you who need what God gives in your life. Okay? So I'm asking you three questions now this morning. There's three questions today. To also write these things down perhaps. Think about these questions about being on track for God's purpose. Number one is this question. Did God know what was going to happen before it happened? Talking about this year. Did God know what would happen before it happened? Yes. Well, if God's word says nothing takes place except that God's prophets know what's going to take place before it takes place. If he says that, surely God knows. Because God's the one that speaks to his prophets. Amen. No year, no day, no, no month takes God by surprise. God knew what would happen even before it happened. Even this virus has boundaries on it. This virus could have been much worse than what it actually is. This whole, um, this whole um, vi vaccine thing could have taken five years to do. It took about, what, five, six months to do. That is God's hand working in behalf of people and nations in natural realms and supernatural realms at the same time. Amen? So God knew what would take place, and God has ways of taking what's bad and turning it somehow toward the good. Amen. For those who are called according to his purpose, those who love God, you're going to find that God's going to start turning things for the good in the days ahead. So number two is this. Can God make even our crisis serve him? Can God make crisis serve him? You're going to find out the entire, throughout the entire Bible, yes, God can take a crisis and turn that into a testimony of God's goodness, God's intervention, and God's gracious workings in our life. Number three is this. Is it possible to get back on course and do the full will of God after having a setback. And of course, that answer also is yes. Tom Hanks showed us that in the movie called Castaway. That guy was five years, crashed on a FedEx airplane in the middle of nowhere in a desert island. And uh, in that movie, of course, we see how um, he finally got the, the bravery and the courage to make a raft and break out of his own boundary he was in and go out in the ocean by himself. And somehow the way was made for him and a great big ship, of course, finds him. And he goes back home. His wife has found somebody else. So the new lady comes in. It's more like he is anyway. And uh, he lives happily ever after. I'm saying that God can restore back to us anything the devil takes from us in times Amen. of crisis in our lives. Amen. I believe again 2021 is a year of recovery in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that. Romans chapter 11 verse 29 says, The gifts and callings of God have no repentance and they are irrevocable. So whatever God's called you to have for a purpose in your life, the time you were born is still intact even to this day. But what the world goes through, it's still intact even to this day. We have to realize every major Bible character had their destinies detained in one way or another. Their purpose was put on hold. Look at, look at Abraham. Abraham had a wife whose name was Sarah. And Sarah said to Abraham, well, maybe... God wants you to take uh, my maidservant and have a relationship with her and have a baby through her because I'm still barren. Abraham listens to his wife in that, in that kind, of a, kind of a foolish way to do this. Of course, it has a baby named Ishmael, and Ishmael is not the child of promise. And of course, you know, beyond that, then God opens up Sarah's womb, and she has a baby there who's the right baby whose name is Isaac. And today, I've been told by historians, Ishmael is now the root of all Islam on the face of the earth today. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that um, when it says God's giftings and callings have no repentance, that there's guys out there in the past, even the present, that have got great healing anointings and great deliverance anointings, and, and they're great evangelists, and they're still seeing fruit take place by their gifting, but their character is totally out of whack. Yeah. And in due time, God is patient but God exposes their sin in due time, and they get dealt with, and their ending is not good when that takes place. You realize that. But what I'm saying here is when God told Abraham, your descendants, I anoint you to be like the stars of the heavens that cannot be counted. Do you realize that the Muslims and the Christians are equal in number all over the earth? 1.3 billion Muslims, 1.3 billion Christians. That's what I've been told by stats around the world. The anointing of Abraham had no, no repentance. 
And so God blessed him to have great numbers of descendants, but that one descendant is going to have war against the other descendant. So you're going to see Islam play a huge role in end time prophecies. And you're going to see beheadings. You're going to see things take place in nations. You're going to see things happening there by Islam. It's going to be very, very, um, very much of a nightmare for folks that are unbelievers. But I'm saying, don't, do not uh, ever become fearful of anything that something happens around you in this world is like. You got to realize that God is not going to let you get caught by surprise. He always makes ways of escape that people can bear whatever comes on the face of the earth. It might be rapture, or it might be grace to get beheaded. One or the other, God's grace will be there for you Amen. in these last days. Amen? So realize that. Look also at Moses. The Bible said Moses, as a, as a young man, is in Egypt. He's uh, like, almost like a second in command to Pharaoh himself in that, in that era. The Bible says he looks one way, looks the other way, and he finds himself seeing Egyptians fighting an Israelite. He kills the Egyptian and thinks he gets by with murder, but of course he does not because someone saw him. And now he's finding himself being exposed, and he finds himself on the backside of a desert running away, and he stays there for 40 years in his life. But praise God, the good news is God brought Moses back to the place where his gifting and calling was. It was without repentance. Look at David. He had a sin with Bathsheba. He murders her husband. He does a very simple act. The baby dies, but as years go by, God forgives his sin and God bursts through Bathsheba, Solomon, the wisest man of the entire earth. And through Solomon carries on the very lineage of Jesus Christ himself through that young boy whose name was Solomon. God can redeem and God can turn to good what the enemy means for evil in our lives. We let God do that. Okay. Um, Psalm chapter 32, David says this. When I kept silent in the time of being crushed by my sin... My bones grew old. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. One translation says my life was sapped and my strength was dried up as in summer. Many believers right now are like that today. Their, their strength is gone. Their bones are sapped of strength. And I found that in Israel's culture, the bones are always where the anointing resides. That's why the Israelites would always take the bones of their descendants and carry them where they went to because they believed the anointing was in the bones. That's why not one bone was broken on Jesus Christ's body because he was the anointed one. And there's, not, there's no anointing lost in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so God is telling us we're going to find some folks around us whose strength is sapped and their bones become as dry as a desert. God is telling us today from Ezekiel. Look on this valley of dry bones and ask yourself, can these bones live? And praise God, he goes on and says, what does it say next? And I saw breath, breath enter the valley of dry bones. And I heard, you see, I spoke and I heard, 2020, a rattling sound. Right now I'm rattling my mouth, okay? But I'm telling you, I hear a rattling sound right now. And I'm hearing God's breath coming back upon his people once again. And it says, as the rattling sound took place, I saw bone joined to bone and bone joined to bone. And all of a sudden I saw all these bones joined together and I saw them stand up as a mighty army. And I saw flesh come upon them. And I saw God's breath breathe in them. And I saw a mighty army for the Lord to conquer the powers of darkness in that day and that era. Amen. I spoke here from... On Christmas Eve, those who were here prophetically about Ezekiel, may I mention more about that perhaps next time I speak as well. But I really believe God's got a great word for us that God's going to breathe upon the valley of dry bones. And God's going to bring a rattling sound among us. And he's going to bring us together once again. And we're going to see a mighty army rising up with the purpose of God in our hearts and mouths. Amen? Amen. How many of you have been going through life and something broadsides you like getting hit with a baseball bat upside the head? We've all gone through something like that. Amen. Amen. Some of you guys feel like that even today yourselves. But I want to say again that God is a restorer of the breach. Any gap you, you think you may have in your life, God can close that gap up by prayer, and by obedience, and by just seeking his face and saying, God, restore in me the joy of my salvation once again. Somebody might even ask, if a minister falls into sin, can they ever be back in ministry once again? Well, Psalms 51 says this, O oh God, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit back within me. The Taylor translation says this way, 
Restore to me again the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you once again. And then it goes on beyond that and says this. Then will I teach transgressors, transgressors your way and sinners will be converted to you when that takes place. That sounds like ministry to me. How about to you? Amen. God can even restore ministers, full-time ministry people, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. God can restore them and get their mouths reopened once again by his spirit. You know, Cheryl told me a few months ago, about a month or so back, she reads things more than I do about on, uh, as far as um, internet and stats are concerned. There are thousands of pastors quitting their churches every month and week in our nation today. Would you say? 1,700, how, how often? A month. There's 1,700 pastors a month quitting the ministry in America right now, today, because of this right here, because of the pandemic. They've lost their crowds. They've lost their numbers. Their money, their money is dwindled. They got no resources. And uh, 1,700 a, a, a week or a month, a month, are actually quitting ministry today in America. We need to see that reversed. These are people that God has called, God's anointed, God's appointed. And I want to see the prophets come back. Think about how hard it is right now for itinerant ministers. They can't go be guest speakers very much in churches. Think about the missionaries like, like Ron Bishop, Bishop folks like this that go all over the world doing ministry and they can't do anything but stay in their homes right now. And praise God, they're writing books and they're doing Zoom meetings. They're doing some things to bear some fruit there, but they're not free yet to do what they were doing for years and years and years up till now. I was saying now the time for us not to take and become discouraged and say we're on the back shelf now. God's forgotten about us. It's all over. The best days are all behind me. I still believe the best days are ahead of us. And we shall weather this storm in Jesus' name. And we're going to come out stronger, not weaker, on the other side. Amen. Is what I'm hearing God saying. So God can make even your disobedience serve him. If you don't believe that, then look here at Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah 60, verse 6 and 7 says... Those of Midian and Ephah, from Sheba and Kedar and Nebaioth, they shall bring gold, incense, and flocks. Now, who are these hard names? Who are these people? These are descendants of Ishmael. It says, Ishmael's descendants, they shall bring gold, incense, and flocks, and they shall be gathered to you and proclaim the praises of the Lord. Even Abraham's disobedience is going to, you're going to see I believe hundreds of thousands of Muslims come to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in this hour and season. Amen. Amen. I mean, if you're seeing it take place right now in Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, other nations there, it might have been disobedience that Abraham did, but God will take that disobedience and God will still intervene with that and bring many sons and daughters into his kingdom in this hour, in this season. So here, as I move along, time and again, after Bible characters fail, an abundant harvest was always reaped. When falling takes place, when punishment happens, when things like this happen in 2020, there's always abundance following drought in God's kingdom. You, you understand that? The men on Jonah's boat turned against him and threw him overboard and said, you, you're the guy that's making all these storms happen. You said it with your own mouth. We want to live and not die. They throw him overboard. And the Bible says they all then came to know Jonah's God by doing that. God brought forth a revival and a harvest, even with Jonah's disobedience. Bathsheba bears Solomon. Abraham raises Isaac, who births the nation of Israel. David gathers the materials together and builds God's temple through his son Solomon. God takes their disobedience and God turns that around and brings some kind of a miracle of harvest and abundance on the other side of their disobedience. I want to have my... Uh, Keyboard player, rep, come back to the platform again here. Help me out with Jonathan. Be in the place up soft again, please. And I'm going to say as I close the service today, I'm going to pray with all you folks in a moment here. But the question may be, you might be asking yourself, is it really possible after I've seen my destiny, my purpose detained, I can really see myself put back on the track that God has for me and his purpose take place in my life? Well, right here in this place, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just for privacy's sake and just for a way to focus upon what God is saying to us. I want to speak right now also to folks that are watching online because you, there's a lot of folks that are watching more and more, it seems like, online. They don't even go to this church. They've never been to this church before. But I want to say to you guys online as well, you are made for a purpose, and you're not here by accident. 
Your parents may have a story about how you were birthed on the earth that may sound like it's, uh, it, it shouldn't even be here, but you are not an accident. The spirit that God put inside your body is eternal. It's going to live forever, either in darkness, the Bible says, or in God's light, God's kingdom. And the choice is, our, is ours to make. Do we accept Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, his forgiveness, his salvation? Or do we go our own way and say, I, I just don't really want to bow my knee and, and be under the control of somebody else? God did not come to control us, to condemn us, to judge us, to see what's wrong with us. The Bible says Jesus Christ came to seek that which was lost, to save those who need a savior, to be a comfort to those who need comfort. To be a healer for those who need healing. Yes. To be a deliverer for those who need deliverance. All things that man needs, Jesus Christ is. He only comes to give you life, the Bible says, and life more abundant. And I, I heard a song years back that I also would echo today in my own life. If I had it to do all over again, I'd serve Jesus every day of my life. Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed right here. I'm going to ask all you folks that are watching online, if you do not know Christ as Savior, never have prayed a prayer. To receive it inside your heart or life. Would you pray a prayer with me right now? Maybe whisper this if you're in a room of crowded people. Or maybe even beyond this, if you're in a place you can't pray. And you feel too self-conscious because there's folks around you. Please pray this prayer someplace this day. Because the Bible says now is the time of salvation. Now is the acceptable year and day of the Lord. Let's pray this prayer. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I realize I can't save myself. I'm not saved by good works, by church membership, by giving, by doing things for the poor and doing kind acts and being a good person. But I realize, oh God, I know this day, I believe this day, I need a Savior. And I accept right now and receive your Son, Jesus Christ, in my heart and my life. I ask you, oh God, to send your Son inside of me by the power of your Spirit. Take sin from me. Be my God, be my Lord, be my Savior. I want, oh God, to be a part of your kingdom. I want to follow you all the days of my life. You that are also out there, you might have heard our singer named James give that analogy there that I also gave on Christmas Eve about how when you get saved, it's called salvation and it's called survival mode. You're out of, you're just surviving as a Christian. That's where it all starts at. You're now born again. Praise God for that. But then beyond salvation, then comes a thing called deliverance, getting set free. From alcoholism perhaps or bondages or depression there's things here in your soul your mind your will your emotions that god wants to set you free from that are negative then beyond that he also wants you to know that once you're free once you're saved you have a purpose in your life that purpose may be something totally different than what you're doing right now or god may add to what you're doing right now and take what you're doing right now god may take that because god told moses what is in your hand and Moses said, I got, I got a stick. So God said, take the stick, go to Pharaoh, and I'll set my people loose. By the stick and by your mouth, saith the Lord. I'm saying that God's got a purpose for all of you. And so if you're out there today and you don't know Christ as Savior, if you pray this prayer, praise God to get saved. Thank God that happens. But go beyond that. God wants to set you free from things that are binding you up. We got a man here named Jack Adams. He's got a great book here, a little booklet. It's not real long. We'll be glad to send that to you. Put it in your hands. The church here as well, if you live too close to us. And he'll help to show you what do you do now that I'm saved. What's the next step? And I encourage all you guys that are out there trying to find a local church to plug into, to be discipled and learn God's ways and God's things. And God's people will be around you to mentor, to encourage and pray with you about things you're going through in life. Life was never meant to be done alone. Amen. Now, all of you that are here, that are in this sanctuary, that are, that are believers out there watching online as well, I want to pray for you right now, if I could, a brief prayer. Oh, God, we throw ourselves now upon the mercies of who you are, oh, God. We know, we realize, oh, God, this day that we are made for such a time as this. And I pray for all those who've lost their purpose. They've lost faith, oh, God, in their destinies. They're wondering why they're on this earth, oh, God. They're not seeing the kind of fruit being born today as they saw in years gone by. And I hear you saying, oh, God, to them that you have crossed the Jordan River into my promised land. And I tell you, like I told the Israelites, the manna has quit falling. And things aren't coming as easy as they did in times past. And I told the Israelites, you shall now plant crops. 
You shall now do labor. You shall now take and you shall take over houses and homes you did not build, but I shall also require of you to maintain them, to work over them. Look for things that are fields that are ripe unto harvest, that you might work in those fields and reap a harvest, saith the Lord. See, God's kingdom is still today. 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration. It takes work in God's kingdom. We don't work our way into salvation. We, 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 work our, we work because we love Jesus Christ and want to serve him on the earth as his hands, his feet, his Amen. mouth, his heart. So, Father, I pray also today as we enter 2021 in a few days, that we, O oh God, enter this new year not with regrets, not with fear, not with bondages, but, O oh God, with expectations, O oh God, of harvest, a fresh anointing, a fresh vision, O oh God, of new beginnings, and, O oh God, seeing ourselves to be more and more like you are. Let it, O oh God, be a year and a season of intimacy, a year, Father God, of power. May your gifts, O oh God, operate in your people. May folks be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. May our youth, O oh God, come alive to the God of relationships. May our children, God, be blessed to know that Jesus Christ loves them, God. You speak to them. You care for them. You lead them and guide them in their destiny and plan that you have for their lives. We give you praise and thanks for all these things. Praise God. Let's all stand to our feet, please. I'm going to have our prayer partners go ahead and come to the front now. If you want someone to pray for you today, they're here in the sanctuary, a prayer of agreement. Whatever that need may be in your life or someone you want to pray for not here today, there's prayer partners coming to the front right now. that will be standing up here. And again, they have masks on. If you don't want them to touch you at all, just let them know that. But they're going to pray for you. These are anointed people. They've been praying throughout the whole week. That as they pray, God will touch your life. And God will bring forth answers and solutions. I encourage all of our church family out there, keep on praying. For Allison, who goes through a, a procedure there that, that cancer was found in her body. And they have taken most cancer out of her body now. But there's still some things to be dealt with. So pray for Allison this week if you do that. Keep on praying for safety for all the two folks in our church that are overseas. We don't know what they're going through over where they're at. It's a secret place they're at. But um, they may be facing things we don't even know about. So be praying for Damien, for Angel, on, a, on an ongoing basis. Amen. Keep on praying also, if you would, here for Loretta Masters, who goes through a de delay in her surgery because of the doctor got COVID virus. It's going to be the surgeon for her. Let's just pray that God watches over her. And the delay she has is God's doing. The healing takes place in her body. So when surgery would, would take place, it won't Amen. take place because it's not needed. Let's just believe God for a miracle for Loretta. Amen. And every any time you have a prayer request at all, please let us know. Let Cheryl know by the emails, by the texting, by our webpage. Those prayer requests, we take those, we pray for those. And God is answering so many prayers. We just thank God for that. Amen. What, what is that? Oh, yeah, there's an offering. There'll be, there'll be buckets in the back here on both sides for offerings. You have an offering to release today, tithes or offerings. Just put those in the buckets as you leave on the left or the right back there also. And um, let's, let's go ahead and let Sean, if you don't mind, Sean, get the microphone. We'll let Sean dismiss us in prayer again this morning. Don't forget to tune in if you could on Wednesday night. Our last teaching on Zoom, healthy family relationships, talks about how to relate to our grandparents, how they relate to us. And you'll, you'll appreciate that as well. Have a blessed week. Have a great new year. A safe new year. Let's enter the new year in again. Rejoicing that God has the best year of our lives in store for us Amen. in 2021. Please, Seven times three. The multiple of God. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a great year for God to breathe life. Even more so in his church in the year ahead. We love you folks. God bless you folks. You stay as long as you want. Last one out. Turn the lights out again today. Amen. <laughs> Let you guys come here for prayer and let Sean dismiss us. Father God, we thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed on us in this current year. And we ask that you will be with us and bestow those blessings and even more on us in the coming years. We ask that you will keep our minds and our hearts focused on you, Lord, and walking in your love and walking our lives through you so that others can see your example of how we should live our lives as we walk through our everyday lives. We thank you for the opportunity to be with our families in this upcoming uh, New Year's Day and to share the things that we learn through your word and through the, the everyday walk that we have for you, Lord. 